G Senjao no Mal, otherwise translated to Devil on the G String, is a visual novel released by Akabasoft 2 on the PC in 2008. The game has become a classic of the genre, and proves to be an impressive title that mixes elements of suspense, mystery, and does this in a realistic setting with unlikely heroes and villains. Although I wouldn't consider it one of my favorite visual novels of all time, I could see why so many people love this title and regard it so highly. The story goes like this. The plot revolves around Kiyosuke, the adopted son of Gonzo, a Yakuza leader. Kiyosuke works under Gonzo in order to pay off the sum total of a loan taken out by his biological father and the costs of raising himself under Gonzo's wing. He eventually hopes to reunite with his mother, from whom he was separated many years earlier. At the beginning of the game, a girl named Haru transfers to Kiyosuke's school and introduces herself as a hero. She initially ignores Kiyosuke, but soon asks him if he knows a person named Mao. Kiyosuke replies to this peculiar question in the negative. Gonzo instructs Kiyosuke to find and capture the enigmatic figure and dangerous mastermind hidden in the city. The game then goes into more chapters, dealing with Kiyosuke and his friends dealing with the evil Mao, who challenges Haru to discover his true identity. The premise of this game is actually pretty impressive. I like the fact that you're playing as this kind of kid genius. I know it's not the most original idea, but it's still fun to see how his life gets complicated by his double life. What I really liked about this plot was how it kind of gets complicated, but it never gets convoluted. There is a difference. The game managed to be very suspenseful, exciting, but also kept this air of plausibility and logic that made it easy to follow and very interesting. There wasn't too much out of the ordinary or that was unrealistic. The characters in this game are a ton of fun, but they're kind of cliché. However, the best character is Iichi, who is absolutely hilarious. He's your best friend in the game, and the crazy thing about him is that he has this whole facade as this boy next door, sweet guy, but when you actually get to know him, he's a pretty terrible person. And the fact that they undermined his character traits and cliches so much was pretty impressive, and there was a lot of great moments with him. However, the crux of the story is the relationship between our two protagonists, Kiyosuke and Haru. It's about the cat and mouse game between these two, and seeing their banter and relationship between each other was probably the highlight of the game. Really, the coolest thing about this story though is that you're not exactly sure who you want to cheer for. Kiyosuke is kind of a terrible person when you think about it because he has to manipulate people and do terrible things. But the strange thing is that he's kind of justified in what he does and the way he was raised. Personally, I found myself rooting for the mobster to come out on top because I just wanted to see some of these characters burn, okay? Oh, what was that? Oh, sorry guys. My lawyer just told me I have to be more discreet. So uh, what I mean is that I want to see some of these characters achieve misfortune. So yeah, the characters were pretty good, especially the heroes and villains, but uh, some of the side characters were just kind of superfluous. The story is split into episodes, and it managed to be very intriguing and complicated without being convoluted, as well as including some good emotional moments. The coolest thing about this game is, again, your protagonist is actually a genius teenage mobster who has to work both ends of his double life gathering information on how to manipulate people, and also growing up as a normal high school boy. This game is really a story about a chess game. It's about getting away with a crime and trying to solve them in a strategic, logical battle. This game actually includes a lot of red herrings and actually a satisfying ending for once. The game's length also isn't too detrimental. I don't know exactly how long it took, but it wasn't one of these 50 hour long stories that dragged on. There's also a lot of decisions in this game, but not too many. It's got a good balance, enough to be interesting, but certainly not overwhelming like other games I know. 
The only things I didn't really like about this title was that the episodic pace made this game feel a little too predictable. Basically, each chapter focuses on one female protagonist at a time, which leads to my other complaint. Like every other visual novel, there's too much sexualization and focus on the female cast, even if they don't really do much to the story. And this is time that could have been devoted to creating a better tale. This is an issue in virtually all virtual novels, I know. It's like going to the zoo and complaining that the animals are in cages, like, what the hell do I expect? I guess it's just a trapping of the genre, but I still hate seeing it. Other than that, I really can't complain about it. It's a tight game with a tight script, and it does most things right. The graphics in the game are pretty solid. There's good character design, though I have to say that Haru's hair drives me absolutely crazy. It looks ridiculous, and every time I see it, I just want to throw a comb at her and say, friggin' use this. Other than that, it's pretty standard, good graphics with good CGI, good everything. The music in this game was particularly strong, which is expected about the title, which was based off the title of a classical music piece. And in that line, most of the music is actually based off actual classical music, basically remade for the game's purposes. Although that might sound kind of cheap, the renditions are actually very impressive and a lot of fun. They get really creative with the music and it ends up being really memorable and adds to the game. It was very well done. In conclusion, G Senjo no Mao is a wonderful game and I understand why so many people love it so much. The story is very well done, very exciting and very realistic, and the characters are also very wonderful. However, I don't know, for some reason this game just didn't really really stick with me like certain other ones I've played. This is one that's well worth checking out, and I suggest you pick it up if you have the chance. Thanks for watching.